Hello, and welcome to this quick video to answer a crew member's question with regard to a possible exam question. So I'll show you the quick, I'll show you the email. I thought it was quicker to answer verbally in this format because I am currently creating Navin Radar Par B. So it is the first time I've seen Part B and Part A mix and merge together. So it's a great question. I don't know if it's real as an exam question, but I thought I'd go through it, answer it, and it's the quickest way of answering a crew member's question. I have everything set up. So let's look at the question. Hi, Fred. I hope you don't mind me contacting you as I'm currently revising for a reset for Navin Radar. You should have watched my videos for Part A first. Anyway, you're studying the Navin Radar app now, so you'll pass. Um, one of my friends has told me that this particular question could come up in an exam. Anything could come up in an exam. Um, finding your position via an azimuth. You do not find your position via an azimuth. You, you, you can confirm your compass error via an azimuth of a heavenly body. It doesn't appear to be in your app. No, because it's not a part A question or it's never been a part A question. It, it, it is a part B syllabus question. It could be incorporated into, so it's a very viable question, hence why I'm gonna put this on YouTube and everywhere else in the world. I was wondering if you could have spared the time on what to do with the declination of finding your position. The declination and the latitude will allow you to work out the compass error. I've revised hard and have my exam on Friday. As you'll see, today is Thursday, so I'm assuming that's tomorrow, hence I'm creating this video very quickly. So if I make any mistakes in my maths, don't kill me. I've looked through my notes, but it doesn't appear to show. I've looked online and find it confusing. Yes, you will find it confusing because you don't find a position via azimuth. You find your compass error via an azimuth of a heavenly body. In the Navin radar syllabus, it's, you're finding your compass error via the azimuth of the sun at rising and setting. Um, I'm sorry for that noise. It just sprung up on me. No problem. Always happy to help. Um, very much appreciate your time and help. I'm getting fairly worried by it. I, yeah, me too. Um, I've looked at the question. I spent about an hour working out how to respond to this. So hopefully this will help. So let's look at the question together. Um, so British Admiralty chart 5048. So I have the chart 5048 out in front of me. And at 1828, so at 1828, in November 2013, DR, so position, 52 degrees north, 006 degrees west. Um, we take a compass bearing, so a compass bearing, compass bearing of the sun, sun, 292 degrees, compass. The declination at this time was 14 degrees north. So we have a position, we have a time, it's the afternoon, so it's most likely sunset, and we have a declination. Now, it's going to be an azimuth of a heavenly body at sunrise or sunset. I know that because that's what the syllabus says. So if we look together, at the syllabus. You need to calculate the compass error by rising and setting bearings of the sun, that's why I know it's the sun, using tables given declination and latitude. So we have been given the declination and the latitude and the fact that it's evening, half past six at night. So that's why I know that the question is looking for you to work out a compass error. The rest of the question will be, you know, you have a bearing of an object at whatever and a range of whatever. 
So we have been given the method or the means of calculating our compass error. So we need to work out from this what our compass error is. So the compass bearing of the sun is 292 compass. We then need to now calculate the true bearing of the sun. So declination is 14 degrees north and the position is 52 degrees north. So let's look inside Norris. I said 2019 edition. And we should be able to find, let's put that to one side, declination of 14 degrees and a latitude of 52 degrees north. So we have, let's find, true azimuth, true bearing of the sun at rising and setting page 397. We have a declination across the top. Now, a full explanation of how you use these tables is given in my nav and radar part B, which I'm currently working on, so it should be available very soon, if not already. And this is just an answer to a crew member's question. So we have declination of 14 degrees against the latitude of 52 gives us 66.9 degrees. So I will explain declination in my full video. Now it's not time. So we have a true bearing of, I say? 66.9 degrees true that means it is is it in the morning or the evening it's in the evening so naughty elephants squirt water it is west of north because the sun rises in the east and sets in the west so therefore the true bearing is 360 minus 66.9 degrees i have my trusted calculator in my hand 360 minus 66.9 is 293.1 degrees so the true bearing of the sun was 293.1 now let's look at the exam question so let's look at the compass bearing and the true bearing the compass bearing according to the question was 292 degrees compass and the true bearing is 293 degrees true therefore the compass error for this heading compass error equals cadet add east is one degree east because true is one degree higher than compass so while the ship is on a heading of whatever it's on it doesn't say it's in the exam question there it's just saying you know you're steering whatever it's well it's not staring saying you're steering normally it would say you're steering 295 so you can work out the compass error they have not given us our heading but they have allowed us to calculate the compass error. The compass error, for whatever the ship's heading is, is one degree east. So we need to apply that to the bearings to work out our position. So they have allowed us to calculate the one degree east is our error of our compass, or the compass error. So that allows us to calculate our position at 1830. So at Question A, 1830, we have a Tusker Rocks, Tusker Rocks at 0, 0, 001 degree compass. Cadbury's Dairy Milk add east, so compass to true is add 1 degree east. Therefore, our true bearing is 0, 0, 002 degrees true because we know that while we're steering whatever heading we're on 
we have a compass error of one degrees east. So we know that the true bearing of Tusker rocks is 0, 0, 002 degrees true. We now have a VSA, so a vertical section angle of a light. So this Tusker light, so we have, now we go to the chart. So Tusker rocks is here on my chart and height, the mean high water springs is 33 meters. Okay. And we have a bearing of, or a VSA is zero degrees, 10 minutes, 0.5. We now go back into Norries. In the exam, they do provide a vertical section angle. So I'll bring the one up they provide. We can now turn to Norries and we have a VSA, a vertical section angle of 33 meters of Tusker rocks. And we have an angle subtended of zero degrees, 10 minutes, 0.5, according to the question. This is an extract on the screen from Norries, and I've just verified it with my real Norries. This is the exam one, and supposedly it's somewhere between 33 and 34, so that's between these two, and it has 10.5, so zero degrees, 10.5. I, I think this is an error. Um, I, I don't know who wrote the question but 0, 010 doesn't exist as far as this is concerned. So whether or not they meant 10 degrees 5, if we look at the question, it says 0 degrees 10.5. As I said, I did not, this is not one of mine. Um, so should we go with, they made it, whoever has copied and pasted this, whoever's created this question, whichever teacher, they have, well, should we just say it's 10 degrees 5. So that would be between 32 and 34, it's nearest 33, it's in the middle, it's between those two, it's 0 0.1. I, if I were writing the exam, I would find a height of 34 meters and I would make it 2 degrees 6 or 1 degrees 30 minutes. So you can get a definite answer. If, there was, if this was a genuine exam question, these numbers or something would match, which allows you to know it's correct. Um, let's change that question to a VSA of 10 degrees 0.5, which is in between those two there, okay? Um, I, I don't think this is a real question just because these numbers don't match. But the concept is very valid. You find the height of the object, and then you're looking for the angle and degrees and minutes, and it gives you a range. So let's just say the range equals 10.5, so let's just say 0 0.1 miles. So we have a bearing of 0, 0, 002 and a range of 0 0.1, and that gives us our position at 18.30 equals, so we've got a range of 0, 0.02. So there's Tusker Rocks. We've got a bearing of 0, 0, 0.02. So let me use my dividers. 0, 0, In this situation 0.1 please don't panic I, I don't expect our numbers to be the same um, this is just purely how to start this question off I'm looking at for 0.1 of a nautical mile so pretty much on top of the rock this is your position. That was the hard bit of this. From here, you have to do a compass course to steer. You have to do a Latin long. 
the point of this question was, do you know how to calculate compass error given a latitude and a declination? So they gave you a compass bearing of something, or the sun, or a heavenly body, in this case the sun, and they told you the time, latitude, and declination. You need to be able to use the true azimuth of rising and setting table, used to be called the amplitude of the sun, and calculate the true bearing to allow you to calculate the compass error. So I'm hoping that that has helped. My nav and radar part B will go through this fully when it's available. Um, the rest of this is purely a compass course to steer, but it is very interesting. And it is the first time I have seen an exam for the OOW nav and radar combine part B with you know, part A. So hopefully that has helped some people and will clear up this poor candidate's question to me. Any questions, um, send me an email. I will do my best to answer. Um, I can't always guarantee I'll come back in a video of this format. It just happened that this time it matched exactly what I've been doing today in my teaching. Good luck.